Hi, Cold Warrior 78 again, back out in the woods. I want to show you an idea I'm working on <clears throat> uh, for simple truck camping. Uh, I like camping in a tent as much as anybody does, but uh, there are some places where it's just easier to pull off the road and uh, camp in your vehicle. Uh, particularly if you're just doing this on a very fast, uh, trying to get to some place and you're just camping overnight for something. So let me show you what I'm up to here. Behind me is my truck, and you'll see a framework on there. Excuse the handhold. Probably don't need to do that. All right, so start with the, the framework here. Uh, what you're seeing is a pair of one by sixes that I notched at the top. I notched to go in here. Let me show you. You kind of see down in there. So it's notched to go down in there. And there's a notch on top. Okay? To hold the post that goes across the top, the beam. Alright. And then this is just a pole I got from Home Depot. I think it was originally designed for uh, holding up plants of some sort. Uh, you can see uh, not so well. Here we go. Uh, the notch in there. Again, one by sixes. Anybody who's been to Home Depot knows what that means. And then uh, another little part of it goes down in there. So I use scrap wood for these cross pieces. Uh, the single bolt and nut assembly right there just to hold them together. Notched out to hold the, um, the cross pole, center pole if you will. Now, to support that, so it doesn't wobble back and forth, I've got these uh, strings. They're currently made out of bank line. Um, I was originally playing with uh, uh, paracord or uh, I think actually of going to a quarter inch rope just so it's a little bit bigger, but I had this laying around, so this is what I'm experimenting with. Basically, it's crossed, you can see right here, so I've, I'm going diagonally from this corner to that corner and then from that corner down here on both sides and that stabilizes the framework so I don't need a lot of heavy timbers to, uh, to uh, support what would effectively be knee braces. All right, let me show you where this thing is going. Hi again. Uh, we're back to the uh, the truck shelter, for lack of a better term. Uh, let me show you what we're up to right now. So before you saw the the sticks that support it, now what you're looking at is a uh, 10 by 12 heavy canvas tarp. Come down a little bit. It's starting to get sh down the shadows here so it okay so the top of the beds up here this is hanging into nothing this is the top of the wheel what I've done is taken a one of these yellow bungee cords hooked it down here on my uh, on my rim so that holds this down <clears throat> let me show you the other part of this because this only works when this is tight Uh, let's see if you can see that All right, over yeah there you go right there that rope so this rope as, as you're aware of the every one of these tarps have grommets on the corners so this rope comes from the other side and the whole purpose of it is to keep this tight. Uh, the um, let me back out of that a little bit so we don't have to see every little hair in my nostril. Uh, the thing about tarps, particularly canvas tarps, you could do this with a sheet or a parachute. Uh, in the army we used to practice with all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be waterproof. 
it's better if it is but it doesn't have to be and here's why if you keep it tight the water will hit and run off if it bags or sags then you're gonna have a problem so the goal here is to get this thing tight and on this end we've done a pretty good job because I've got let me show my finger here right from that corner around between the truck and the and the bed between the front the rope snakes through to the other corner this one does the same thing over here coming through to this corner so the front of it is fairly tight now the part towards the back is not nearly as tight at the moment uh, it'll tighten up when I put the bed uh, the uh, tailgate up right now I've got the tailgate down because I need to be able to load the rest of the stuff in here these yellow bungee cords will actually hit, hit down to the trailer hitch and pull that tight. Let me show you what's going on on the inside. Okay, here's a view of the inside. Uh, the uh, the ridge pole there is probably three and a half feet higher than the side walls of the truck, which are about two foot high. So you don't really have room to stand up, but you can sit up, you can kneel. Uh, these are my uh, army sleeping bag pads and a civilian version of the same thing just to uh, take some of the this this hard plastic is tough to sleep on uh, as you can see in the front the uh, the tarp does not come all the way down I did that for a reason <clears throat> a you need to have airflow so you don't suffocate yourself and uh, B when the water comes in if it was to rain uh, those two grommets up there get tied together and the rain just falls down between the truck and the uh, or between the cab and the bed uh, At this point that's been enough uh, Interested in comments to to look at another way to do that. Uh, I did this once in the rain and I put a uh, small uh, vinyl tarp down there and it helped uh, keep the rain out. I don't like it because it makes it too uh, stuffy inside now one thing about tarps as you can see up here along the top there's almost always a seam in these big tarps 10 by 12s anything like that anything bigger than like an 8 foot um, and whether it doesn't matter whether it's vinyl or uh, canvas there's almost always some kind of seam that seam's got an edge and if you notice on this edge I've got the edge pointing downward you don't want it pointing upward, it'll catch the water. Common sense, but you'd be surprised how many people don't get that. Now on the back of this, uh, just because the pole is a little bit long, this thing sticks out past, vertically, past where the, uh, the tailgate comes up. And that seems to work really well. Get a side view here. Uh, there you go. So the base of the tailgate is in here okay and as you go straight up you can see that sticks out maybe five inches uh, that helps shed the water on the back side uh, you can put a secondary piece of canvas over this to block it off uh, I may do that tonight since it's going to be real cold um, but generally you don't need to do that you want the airflow uh, again you don't want stuffy and uh, potentially you know I don't know that you could suffocate on the inside of one but I certainly wouldn't want to be in one that's all closed up all right particularly not one that's this small so the next step is put the sleeping bags in and uh, get ready for the night so I'll show you where that when we get there see you in a minute all right so here's what it looks like once you get the uh, the sleeping bag and stuff in it now let me explain my sleep system I have two bags this is an outer bag okay it's designed to go around another sleeping bag this is the inner bag it's just a regular bag and then I've got a poncho liner in here um, if you have never used an army poncho liner you are missing out here's two more I use these this is gonna be for the dog tonight but uh, it's a very lightweight blanket quilt uh, nylon with some back in the day it was polar guard I'm not sure if it still is or not but it's it's a great little blanket tremendous amount of warmth in that little sucker 
It's got uh, ties here on the corners and stuff, so you can actually use it in a poncho. That's why they call it a poncho liner. You can turn a poncho into a sleeping bag. Uh, but anyway, back to this. So, uh, my standard for years has been this outer bag, which by itself is barely a three season bag. It's basically a summer weight, maybe a little bit into the spring, a little bit into the fall, but there's not a lot, I mean, you can see, there's not a lot of, of uh, insulation in that sucker. And then this is a Swiss gear, uh, there you go, Swiss gear. That's a stuff bag came in. Uh, so it's a, it was like a $30. In fact, I got it on sale for less than 30 bucks. Um, sleeping bag when I got it. It's a mummy bag and it's a three season kind of thing. You could use that, you know, all summer. Uh, depending on how cold it is in the springtime, push it in the spring, push it in the fall. It's not a winter bag. This is not a winter bag. But you put them together, and particularly when you put a combo with a poncho liner on the inside, and yes, this is a winter sleep system. Um, let me show you some one more thing before I go on to that. Down here, this is an old army shelter half. It's just a thin piece of canvas, um, six ounce duck canvas probably. It hadn't been watertight in a dog's age. I think I picked this up on a surplus store in 1974. Okay, it's ancient. But here's what it does. It's a very thick, nah, thick's not the right term, tight weave. It's a very tight weave and it blocks uh, wind. So when you put that on the outside, it's breathable. So it gives you a bivy sack kind of protection against the wind, against some, you know, spill something, dog comes in here and pukes on you, whatever. Let's face it, you know, life happens. You don't want your sleep system to get wet or nasty. That helps protect it. And it also is great, like I said, against the wind. So you combine a wind barrier, a poncho liner, inner bag, outer bag, and a pillow. Uh, and yeah, I've got this pulled out on the bed, on the trail gate a little bit so you can see it because it's just getting too dark inside there. Um, that's a that's a winter sleep system uh, system just like this in the tent on those uh, sleeping pads you can still see the army sleeping pad right there uh, on those pads uh, my friend and I were camping in the beginning of January all over uh, uh, Arizona the Gila wilderness of New Mexico where I don't know how cold it got at night but the highest it got during the day in the Gila was 35 Okay, it barely got above freezing during the middle of the day. So it was well down in the 20s, probably the single digits uh, when, when night came down. Similar at uh, uh, the Grand Canyon, uh, where it was below, well below freezing every night. And this is fine. This will keep you nice and warm. Uh, my, my typical, what I wear when I sleep in something like this is uh, poly long johns and uh, maybe a, uh, a light shirt or sweater, uh, very, very thin. And that's enough. Sometimes, sometimes it's cold enough to put on a wool hat, sometimes not. Uh, sometimes I don't do that because it's not required. So you don't have to have a lot of money in this stuff. I don't remember if this was Eastern Mountain Sports or REI. Uh, both of them are still in, uh, still in existence. Um, and they both still make good equipment. Again, it wasn't very expensive when I bought it. This was on sale. It basically was a big box store. I don't even remember where it was. Uh, and the Army Poncho Liners, you can buy them surplus all over the internet. So I don't think, now granted mine's older, uh, but if you went out to get this today, you wouldn't have to spend a hundred bucks on it. Really. I mean, if you're spending a hundred bucks on it, okay, cool. You, you know, you're probably getting a nice system. Uh, but this particular bag dates to the late 1970s. I picked this bag up in the 1990s um, because the one that I used to use inside there just wore out. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to have a $300, $400 sleep system to get by. You can do the same thing. Uh, now, this is not backpacking weight. This thing's kind of heavy. Um, but it'll get the job done. 
and then poncho liners for the dog. Um, and if it gets really cold, I'll steal some of those and throw them on top of me and just get the dog close. But anyway, that's where you are. Now, I it's taken me a while yakking at the camera to get this whole thing put up. But uh, in actuality, if I were to just put it together 25, 30 minutes and I'm done. Literally, it takes less time to do this than it does to set up the tent. Um, so, stand by for a second. Okay, uh, I can't get losing light here. Uh, so anyway, what do you think? Comments, ideas, improvements? Um, cost on this, on, on the shelter is the tarp. The tarp cost 67 75 dollars something in that neighborhood i got it two three years ago i've been playing with this for, for a little while now um the wood uh, if you notice that purple mark that was scrap wood at a at a home depot i don't think it cost me four bucks and then the pole was eight to ten okay so i have way less than a hundred dollars in the entire operation you can get really nice tents that go in the back of a, a truck five six hundred dollars uh, I didn't want to spend that you know do it for less uh, so anyway I'm looking forward to seeing your comments how, how would you improve this because I mean I like to think that I'm a smart guy you guys have uh, have perspectives I don't have so let me know how you think all right uh, hi just a quick addendum to the uh, trailer shelter <coughs> sorry truck shelter video I did earlier as you can see behind me it's gone it took uh, 15 minutes uh, most of which was actually uh, messing with that big heavy canvas tarp I'm thinking about changing that to a uh, farm grade uh, vinyl tarp they're a whole lot uh, stronger than those blue and silver tarps you can buy in Home Depot and stuff about the same size, a lot lighter, uh, a whole lot cheaper. Um, this one is plenty watertight when it's solid, but I've used this for a couple of things over the years. Starting to get some pinholes in it, so I may have some, some uh, reliability issues on that standpoint. So something that you can change out periodically, maybe a better answer. Um, also as a uh, footnote for, uh, for myself, I went out this time without Sorry, my dog wants to go. Uh, I came out this time without the pad that I had originally designed into this. <clears throat> As you saw yesterday, I had those camping pads. Uh, they're only about a half inch to a quarter inch thick each, maybe three eighths. Uh, the pad that I originally envisioned this with was one of those mattress pads with the big pyramid things on top, the really squishy open cell rather than closed cell, which is the other stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, last night proved that I am getting too old to sleep on a quarter inch or half inch of closed cell foam on top of steel. Uh, that part of it wasn't very comfortable. I was plenty warm. I uh, didn't have any problem with the wind, with anything else going on. Uh, but uh, in my case, my shoulder needs more padding. I wound up with an MRI uh, just before I left, found out I had a couple of tears in the shoulder that'll have to be dealt with probably this spring. So. We'll see. Anyway, just wanted to give you an update on that. Cold Warrior 78 out here.